So today I am speaking to Ruth and Barbara Ann from Ooh and Ah. You are going to love this podcast. The girls talk about how their business has evolved and it really has from starting off at trade shows and farmers markets and stalls of Victoria Square. They are now taking the internet by storm with their products. They talk about how their business has evolved and how COVID had given them the time, the pandemic really and shutdown has given them the time to evaluate their business and, and see how they can grow and embrace a marketing strategy that they never really had embraced before in their business. And since they've done that, their business has grown to new heights. They also talk about social media, collaborations with other businesses. And I think you'll get lots of value for that and how it'll open your eyes to the possibilities of collaborating with small businesses and large businesses, which they talk about as well. They also talk about um, the struggles of motherhood with running a business, but how they've kind of found their way now and um, are really so successful in their own right. Um, They don't give themselves enough credit. I try to give them credit in the podcast for everything that they do because I think that they're amazing and I think you will too. You're going to learn so much and um, yeah, I just, I can't wait for you to listen. The Dig Podcast is a podcast that focuses on business life and all things social media. It's a place of learning and one where you can take away actionable tips that you can put into practice straight away in your business. I hope it inspires you to reach your goals and never give up on that dream. So hello girls, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for being on the Dig Podcast. I, whenever I sent you a message, I was like, please say this, say yes. And no. I was out in the car and um, I came in and didn't press play until I came in and I was like, let's hear this. And then we're like, yay. Ah, no. good, good, I'm so happy. But do you know what girls, I know, actually don't know all the background stuff, but I know like in the last 18 months, like all about your business and stuff because I've been following it so closely, but I would love everyone to hear about you guys. So can you introduce yourselves and your business and, you know, we'll just take it from there. Yeah, well, um, I'm Barbara Ann as um, Mrs. A, as we call it. Yeah, I am Ruth the O. Rue, Rue, Rue and Rue, uh, uh, and Bah is what we go, it's a bit crazy. That's like. how it kind of came about. Um, and we joined together in business nine? Ten, ten, ten years ago. Ten years ago. Just, yeah, ten years ago, just before I got married. Yeah. And yeah, it was kind of a, oh, let's bake some buns and make some money because I need to help pay for a wedding. So it was like, hey, let's do this. And um it kind of start, started off in my kitchen and then we moved up. Um, my brother used to make ice cream, so there was a unit on the farm. So we moved up into there then because they had moved to France, so it was empty. And we went, oh, we'll only use this for a short time and see how it goes because we're doing Balmoral. We decided just to take the plunge and take a stand at Balmoral. And then we never left. It kind of just exploded and we were baking cake pops all around the country for everyone. And and then so it, cake is pops. That, is that where it started, cake pops? So the we uh, sticks with the cake? Balls of cake. Yeah. Of stick. So we did those. The farmyard animals were a winner all the time. So we did those cupcakes. And then up to you wouldn't try making us a birthday cake. So we were like, I will we'll try that. So then we started doing cakes. And then it was, oh, you'll do me a wedding cake. And then, okay, we'll try a wedding cake. And then... And not one of, not one of us trained in decorating or baking I am environmental health um, degree and Ruth is business. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was kind of complete, complete winging it. <laughs> so what was the business called then? Little Treats N.I. is okay. what we were known as. And when you um, say, when you say you, none of you had trained, so how the hell did you learn? Just, just did it. We just kind of thought, oh, this is it. And we can do that. Sure, it's fine. Look at a picture and recreate it. So I don't I honestly it is complete we talk about we win things half time but we honestly do and it and thankfully it's paid off. Yeah. Um and we do it there's an element of we've all I love to bake all like I used to bake with my grandma years and years ago, so bake it is there. It's all you know the kind of yeah. gist of it and you know what works and what doesn't and that kind of thing. So 
it's in, I think it's in the blood and you have to be creative. We're both quite creative and know what we want and what looks good. So I think that's half the battle when you kind of mm-hmm. art. So that's, that's where we were at. We did that for four years, four or five years maybe. And then the shift, there was a shift. Farmers markets what used to be like amazing. We had stalls in Victoria Square and Belfast and George's. All the big agricultural shows, we were there with bells on. Bigger stand every year. We just kept growing and growing. But it became saturated. Yeah. Everybody, you know, everybody was doing it. So saturated. And people, it wasn't a novelty for people to go to the farmer's market anymore or to see stalls at Victoria Square. Or it was it was about, oh, there's that stall again or things like that. So it did, it, the market shift changed. And so did we, essentially, because obviously... I was five years married at that point and we were working seven days a week. We were both doing our jobs still and it wasn't sustainable, you know, as well as there was waste. There was, you know, waste. If you went to a market, you had to make all this fresh stuff. So we hated the waste aspect of it. Um, So then... You used to get fed to the cows. The waste, all the cake went to the cows. Can cows eat cake? Oh, they love it, yeah. Love it. (laughs) Love it. Um, so then that's when we kind of got our heads together and said this isn't this isn't what we want to do essentially seven days a week you know we were you know wanting to have kids we were this is you can not do it seven days a week taking them to markets freezing cold or things like that so very labor intensive for all you were getting back and you know if you were doing one cake one person could produce say two two birthday cakes at a push a day so scalability was just not there you know one person can only put out so much in a day and we just thought this this is not gonna get us anywhere this is not gonna make big amounts not big amounts of money but there's no no future for our families in this so we decided right something we need to come up with something else that's baked but different to kind of and not on the market yet you know yeah. that kind of way it was kind of like trying to yes there's lots of things different on the market but it was trying to find a product that wasn't on the market anywhere and that we could produce and make so that's where you and I came from we had a product we had the the cookie Ruth was in America and they have cookie cards but they're they're huge there's millies do them they're 12 inch but we then thought let's do a letterbox that's how you want to get something through the letterbox a card that you can eat and it's different and it's not on the market and we can adapt it for what we can so we had the product then we needed the packaging to make sure it got there in one piece and then we needed the brand so yeah. that's where you know then came from so we had the product the packaging and then the brand probably more than anything yeah and what year was that that was 2015 Okay, and then how did things progress with, how did people respond to the cookie through the ladder box? It was a slow burner because we didn't put an awful lot of marketing behind it. We we got the first batch of boxes made and delivered and then Barran had triplets. Right! That kind of made... What were you thinking? ...the curveball in the whole... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the progression, the, the speed, the speed we wanted to grow, it just kind of kind of went <laughs> plateaued a bit, which is what happens when families are involved. Um, like there'll be lots of women probably listening, thinking, "Oh, that's me. I had all these plans, and then I, I, my family grew maybe unexpectedly or planned." And I think as women, like that just happens, and we have yeah. to like, tell us what happened then. Well, we, we, we did let, we just let it slow burn and we were basically selling on our, we had our own website, um, but we didn't push, there was no marketing behind it, there was no nothing, it was just on there and it was bringing in orders and we were doing a bit of Facebook, not very much Instagram and then we got approached by a company in England, Yumbles, which they're a, a, a food gifting company, um, they're, yeah. they're primarily food gifting yeah. company. So we sold through them and then we got approached by more and more companies like Funky Foods. There was Prezi Box, like major gift companies in England. So that's where we were we were selling from and we were selling like masses amounts yeah. each week through these companies. And we thought, oh, this is amazing. This is great. But we weren't focusing on our own website, which 
it just sat there and very rarely was looked at, very rarely updated. We just had a website. So in our head, that was like the tick box. We've got a website. We're an online company and we've got one. And yes, we're like winning because we were selling product, but none of those sales were coming well, a very small percentage were coming through our site directly. And how did those companies in England find out about you? Once Yumbles was a was a biggie, and I think once we got them, the other people saw that we were selling through them, so then approached us. So that's how that's how they kind of found out about us. And it was great. We were we were busy, and the sales were amazing, but. It wasn't until lockdown hit when we had to say, right, we're closing all these time because we're closing the business, that it gave us such a step back to really look at it and go, yeah, we're really busy, but look at that percentage we are giving away of our product is unreal. Like, scarily, now when you look at it, that you're going, whoa, we were really busy, but not busy fools, but you're just going, like, that was the scary amount that we were giving away. On the exact side of things now, not what you do anymore? No, everything, 100% is through our website. So, and we have, like, we didn't have a marketing plan before because for, for us, it was only the two of us. Plus, we had, a uh, whenever I fell pregnant, then we took on our first employee, which is Alana. And so then, obviously, it was the three of us. And I went off and had three babies and was back into work in Valentine's. They were born in November. I came back in Valentine's because it was one of our busiest times and in and out then after that you know as uh, you don't get maternity leave whenever you're self-employed you bring them with you and you lay them on the floor and yeah they get used to the noise of the mixer and the (laughs) and the oven sleeping and it's it's what you do and and it's a struggle but it's it's the end goal is worth it you know now that you're the the mum guilt it's will never leave you where you think what you're doing, I don't think no matter what you do in life, you'll always have the mum guilt that you're not spending that 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 balance there. But um, for us then, it, yeah, there was no marketing plan at all. As I say, you said because it's just us pair and then Alana. So all we were focused on was getting the orders getting out. Getting the orders out. Yeah, from those companies, all those deals coming in, we were like really busy and going, oh my goodness me, we can't, you know, every day you're just basically getting the order in, getting it shipped and that's it. And not, um, having any time to think about yeah how we grow our own bit because we're like oh we're busy enough the bills are getting paid and you know it's all okay until COVID hit and we actually had five weeks where everything was shut down and we got to reevaluate the whole business model and where we wanted to go from here and all that kind of stuff and it and well, I suppose from that, then we did the live drops. We chucked for five weeks and did live drops. We did so, we had, nobody had childcare because we were obviously, nobody was allowed at anybody's house at that time. So we had no childcare. And so the, our husbands worked through the week and then we did the live drops and went we baked. Weekend. And then we went in on Saturday, Sundays and shipped out on the Monday. So that's what we did for a good eight weeks um, in the first lockdown and realized the sales that we could get in. And that was through Instagram alone. Um, yeah. And through just doing live drops, that was once a week. And we were, you know, pushing out four or 500 orders a week over the weekend, just the two of us and going, right, okay. Wow. It was, it was a real wake up of, oh, we might not need to go back to, to give them a portion of the sale every time, you know. And then you thought, oh, this is just through Instagram. I wonder if we get a wee bit of money to adverts then what happened and it was a real learning learning curve for us of this is a whole different way of doing things and it kind of opened our eyes to right okay so this is what an online business should be like not yeah. just having a website with a tick box and selling it through somebody else and Ruth I know your um background is in business but um what like obviously you did your business degree a a while ago where things have changed a lot in relation to digital and stuff but what how did you how did you know how to do the ads and you know what way this would you would navigate through this did you get did you employ some people to help you or did you just do it self-taught or what way did it work i mean we looked at there's a few like obviously yes as you say at uni back in the day this was not a thing it just didn't exist advertising was a newspaper or a magazine a billboard like 
this didn't exist. So um, we were using um, guys that had built our website, their um, digital marketing team. Uh, they did bits and pieces for us, but all our Instagram content, we do all ourselves. But for advertising, then we went with um, Sian at SE3, and she does all that Google stuff, which is surreal. That's no, but yeah, we, we yeah. have we have looked at it and we have looked at it again, but you just don't have the time. You know, you can't physically, you're trying to be creative and get new products out there, but you can't then get your head into understanding Google Analytics. You know, you know your target market, you know your gender specific, you know all those things, but then to get that, the behind the scenes of targeting those markets. And all that changes so quickly that you need, you literally need a dedicated person to be doing that and we don't, I don't know anybody in small business that has the time to do that. Like, and and we'll link that lady, uh, that business that you've mentioned in the show notes in case anyone you know wants to find out more. But did you find it hard to do that mind shift of I'm going to have to pay someone to do this? Can we afford to pay a person to do this? I know that's what I came up against in my business and what I hear a lot of the people that I work with say, oh, I couldn't afford to pay someone. Like, did that come into it or did you say, no, I, we need to? Or I think we we brought it down to price per cookie, what we wanted to spend on price per cookie. So we knew what percentage. I think because we were working with those other companies before, we were given a massive percentage away already. So anything for us was a bonus. So if we even had to give 50p of a cookie away just for advertising alone, we were already winning because yeah. it was coming through our website and we were already getting a, you know, a, a higher percentage profit. So I think... For us, it was an easier way of knowing we had to give that money out because we were already doing that. You know, on the retail side of things, selling through another market platform, you were already giving that percentage away. So if we could then target that a wee bit better, it wasn't as scary, I don't think. Yeah, um, yes, but I, I totally get because, yeah, so that person's going to charge you a fee, but then they're also going to be spending your money on the ad. So it's you're getting hit twice, really. You know, they're getting a fee and then you're having to pay Facebook or Google for the actual ad as well. So it is scary for people that don't are doing no advertising whatsoever because and also because it's it's such a trial and error thing. You have to start with a budget and focus it, target it at some people and it might not work. And you have to be prepared to wait three months sometimes and see if that advert works and then look at it again and some people aren't in the position to do that and we were just really lucky at seeing everything that we tried well not everything there's been some that haven't worked but we've been pretty lucky that most things haven't thought Good. Well, yeah, I know a lot of people will be interested in thinking about that. I suppose, um, you, like you said, when you're so busy in your business, you don't have time to learn about Google Analytics and it's not your expertise. I have always wanted the Dig Podcast to be a place of learning and a place of inspiration, but I've also wanted it to be a place where businesses can gain exposure. That's why I'm so excited to open up the Dig Podcast to businesses and allow them to pitch their business to you. Here at Moira Cosmetic Dental, our team are dedicated in providing our patients the highest standards of modern, preventative and minimally invasive clinical care while ensuring the best possible customer service experience. We desire to build relationships with our patients in a relaxing environment so that our patients have a positive experience while visiting the dentist and feel confident and safe while in our care, having had the opportunity to build a trusting relationship with our team. We particularly want nervous and phobic patients to be able to take control of their own oral health. We do this by providing a wide range of advanced treatments, investing in the state of the art technology and training necessary to deliver life changing treatments, such as dental implants, IV sedation for nervous patients, adult orthodontics, including Invisalign and cosmetic treatments such as bonding. All of our team are upskilled with additional qualifications, training and skills to further enhance the services we provide and the patient's overall experience. As part of our desire for all our patients to benefit from preventative care, we put a lot of emphasis on our hygiene services and are so proud to have a full-time dedicated hygienist looking after our patient's gum health. We have created a homely environment to put our patients and visitors at ease while backstage, our clinical areas and clinical team are working tirelessly to maintain the highest standards of cross-infection control and sterilisation. 
Our dedicated treatment coordinators are a friendly and personal point of contact to help all our new and existing patients through the treatment process. If you would like to find out about cosmetic treatment or joining us as a patient, or you simply want to follow for some interiors content and oral health advice, you will find us on Instagram and Facebook. Just search Moyer Cosmetic Dental and look for the yellow door. And marketing wise then, I had written down here that I wanted to talk to you about marketing because you are, in my opinion, the gold standard of how to market a product like you're, like I just, I watch in amazement. I'm like, how do they, they're just, you just, obviously you know your product so well and your audience so well, but like what type of marketing strategy do you have? So I know you're big uh, on social content, but is there other elements to your marketing strategy as well? we have a, our, I suppose we we've got our seasons we work very seasonal with our stuff as well we've got our big seasons we work towards and before we were always pulling together something a week before that season happened so I suppose but now we do have a three month plan market plan sometimes it goes by the wayside if you're too busy but yeah. you do have planned in who you've got you know we have your collaborations we work with we try and do at least something once a month we're doing a couple this month but you try and space them out because they're hard enough to come by and they have to be relatable to your product so it's kind of like and again your your season we do your seasons we work towards each of those there and then the in-betweeners you're doing your collaborations you're doing your influencer marketing you're all doing just creating content but I, yeah. I also think like it's really hard to know what to come across on on your social media as well you're you're scared of like becoming too personal on your instagram because it's a business page but at the same time as people want to see that personal so it's kind of like trying to find that that happy medium too kind of thing yeah well, i think you definitely have that but just to give you an example of the way I see your marketing strategy being so successful. So last week I was so busy on social or maybe it was the week before, sorry, so busy in work that I wasn't on social media much. So I didn't see anything from Una Cookies, but I got the Dirty Fries email and yeah. that made me go, oh, what are they at now? Dirty Fries, what's this? And then I went on to Instagram and seen all about it. So like I, to me, sometimes people don't see the value in the email marketing. And that's when it hit me as well. Honestly, this is a true story. I was like, Dirty Fries, like they do cookies, what's Dirty Fries? And then I went on and seen where it was all taken off about the Dirty Fries. And, you know, it, it reinforced to me too how important the email marketing is. And I see it coming through Cookie Monster and all the different strap lines you use and all on, on email marketing. So is that something that's planned out in, in advance or what way do you yeah. do that? Yeah, we would try and plan maybe three or four, three push for maybe a month unless you have like a, a draw or a new product or a season that you're trying to to go for but that was also a realization for us in in lockdown that you're going right okay we had like at that time I don't know how many hundred was it that a few thousand sign ups and we were like they're all our customers and we have like they are basically sitting there waiting waiting for us to tell them something and we aren't telling them anything so it was like right okay well that's the first place to start and um, let's contact them and tell them what's going on and the first email we sent, it, you know, and you can see the return back, your sales back. And we were like, oh my God, like this is just saying. Uh -huh. And then it became an email. Sometimes you're just so fuzzed with what's going on that then you're just going, oh, that's a full batch of customers sitting there that are potentially waiting with their card details, ready just to buy something off you. And I think we're quite lucky that ours is, can be just a spontaneous, it's an impulse buy. Yeah. which is which is great you know it's not large amounts of money and it's a treat to yourself as well as a gift product but the email marketing for us definitely was a winner like what platform what platform do you use for your email marketing and um, mailchimp and do you find it good for what you need to do absolutely really user friendly easy. easy like and then your report side of it is also really straightforward easy to see um, I have no no qualms with Mailchimp whatsoever. It's because, definitely worked really well for us. Because previously we actually the, it was the company we were using was doing it was SE3 GNR, um, 
Me, the, the, the meal shots and then lockdown hit and then Ruth, that was Ruth's dedicated task was to figure out meal merge to do herself and that's how like Ruth said it was easy to navigate that she was able to even though that it, it, it had been sent out before there was a template there you yeah. just changed over and, and swap in and out your images and it, it, it was totally dead on and then you were like all right okay we were paying them to do that but actually I can do that myself so having that wee bit of downtime just to kind of look at that was great but then you can take that up on yourself as that is part of your daily yeah. task also well, that's another thing for us we got so marketing to us didn't seem that important to us it was you had to be in the kitchen and you were baking cookies as fast as your crocs could bake them you were like <laughs> and the sweat lashing off you and yeah. at the end of the day responded to emails and that was you out the door to get home to the kids whereas now We've got more staff in that we can actually dedicate so much more time to, to this part, to the marketing, to planning, to everything, because really that is what drive it's what where the future is, it's where you're driving it to, instead of just constantly treading water every single day. And having the content, you know, we were just taking rash, you know, really rash pictures just really quickly, just grab this cookie and take a picture of it rather than actually setting time aside to go, right, let's set this scene up and take good pictures because the picture sells the product. And if you just have a a, a shot, like picture of a cookie, it's not going to sell as well. And as well, the other one we had, the name you were saying about Strapline, the Dirty Fries, the name sells stuff as well. And that's what we found that making it more like go, oh, what is that? It's like going, you need to, like it's getting creative, not even with the product, with the name because that then just goes, oh, I want to find out what this is all about. So it's kind of like, give me that. I need to get a piece of that. So it's kind of like everything, all, every aspect of it's really important to just keep it all together. And the product matches the strap line the, and the whole marketing and content all. Yeah, marries together. You girls are so good at it. Like, I don't know if you give yourselves enough credit, but like it, it is all, it, you can see it all come together in a big circle before the product actually goes out. And like, so you talked about photography there, loads and loads of businesses struggle with this. And I get it. It's so flipping hard. Like, you know, a flat product like yours yeah. as well. How, how, tell us a wee tip, a few wee tips about how to tell us right, I just saw that. the light and she's like oh. <laughs> okay so you're the light holder so someone has to go go on and the hand model I'm oh, the hand yeah. model. all the hands are mine I've got, I've got <laughs> granny hands so it's never my hand in it I, but no I really I think if you know your own product you know what light you want to get behind it but we've got we've a light box um, that we can set the stuff in so the lighting's exactly the same every single time now sometimes the like sunlight's amazing but I do you think lighting is key to have really good lighting behind a product to show off its full potential and, and would you be able to give me the link for that light box and I could put it in the show notes because everybody yeah, yeah, would be like yeah. how do I get it yeah it's just no. the Amazon boy. yeah it was just Amazon like we we have got the we've got big lights we've got we had ring lights we have all kind of you know you get all you know we've got all this stuff and you're like going we've got no space to put it but um um, I do definitely just think there's props. We used to use a lot of props, um, but now we don't because with our branding and we'll, we'll be on that, but our, ours is all about colour. It's all about bright colours and fun and making it as, as appealing and like mouth-watering for us. It has to look like you just want to like lick your screen but my everything's done on on phone there's no fancy expensive cameras it's all done on our phones all the images yeah um, and so it's, it's not don't be like I don't want people to be rushing out and buying like hundreds and thousands of pounds worth of cameras because that's definitely not no not maybe the light box the light box combat, combats the shadow issue that really got me I couldn't cope with that, trying to get the right yeah. shadow is the light box is really good for that amazing amazing like and the even uh, say props as well props are good for some things but then it takes away from your product sometimes as well so it's kind of like one if you have loads of props in there your product's nearly lost yeah. so it's kind of from that balance sometimes it's nice to have a, a rolling pin and a whisk with a with a, just a flat product so you're kind of getting a bit more 3d on it but at the same time it's just something as nice as just a picture of the product on its own, a simple on a colourful black background. If that suits your brand, yeah. it's it's all about sometimes 
simple as nice as well as as I'm um, the props. I think I'm just taking, giving it the time that it deserves. You know, as we were saying, we used to just, you know, hold a cookie and take a picture, and it looks like nothing. You may as well if I'm taking a photo of I don't know what. It just didn't do anything. Give it the time it deserves and take. 10 of the same thing and edit every one there will be a difference in each one and just kind of give it that time and try different things and don't be scared to, to try it but like when we first when we first um, launched the website we got a photographer in and paid him all this money to take photos and to take the background away and now you're like you now can do that in two seconds. Yeah. Now, now you pay Canva like something like twenty pound a year, and you can take the background away yourself and add in your own. You know, like we've added in our own um, things as well. So there's there's Photoshop. I can't Photoshop is really difficult for me to navigate. But Canva, I can put a, take a picture of a cookie, take the background away, and then add our colours in the background if need be. If there's not if the light's not great that day, or it's been a really quick picture because it's been a really funny cookie, or it's been a really just crazy day that you haven't had the time to set it up, but you want to take the picture that you go onto Canva, upload it on, and it's everything is the same. So it's everything is consistent. It's yeah. always making sure that it's consistent too. So Canva, there'd be people, people are aware of it. Some people aren't. The people who aren't, this is going to change their life because Canva is amazing. Um, and you pay, like if it is, it's peanuts really, like 20 yeah, pounds or something for the... I think it's 20 pounds for the year or something something silly like that there. Yeah. I think I can pay as much as that. I know you can add on different bits to it, but yeah. like I think it's 20 pounds for the year. And that's so you can you. set up your templates. If anybody's listening, like if you and I have specific brand colours, and then they take a picture of a cookie, they upload it, drop that cookie into that branded colored square of Instagram that's already cut out in the right uh, dimensions. Totally, yeah. And boom, you can look like a professional photographer in seconds. Yeah, totally, totally. It's, it's, and it is really easy to use. Like, I could do it quickly. Like, we decided to do a drop at lunchtime and I just took a picture and took the background and put some writing on it and that was done with them. I said, right, get that ready to go on there. It's good to go. And... Yes, it's obviously practice. I could do it quicker than probably Ruth could because I do it most of the time. Yeah. But at the same time, it is easy to navigate. And don't but get me wrong. Isn't it mad? This is part of life, that part of business life now. Like there will be businesses listening who are tr- still, you know, not embracing this. And I get it because it is a minefield. Like you just wanted to sell cookies, right? Yeah. But now you're like marketers and, you know, content creators. and But it's kind of what it takes, isn't it? It, it, absolutely it really it really is it's not like we were always about oh you just need want to sell your cookies and that's it but it is a full package you have to get you know get to know and it's it doesn't have to be massive or it doesn't have to be a massive spend you can do it like on your phone like we do it all on our phone like using the Canva app yes we do stuff with you know Sian from SE3 does a few bits for us and um, whatever we don't have time or it goes beyond my expertise of Canva or patience. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's not a big, massive time investment. And it's most of it's done at nighttime, <laughs> whenever yeah. the kids are in bed or they're in the bath and you're doing something quickly and it's like telling, just juggle it all. Yeah. And, yeah. and girls, so U and I cookies then, um, that all happened during lockdown. We got to reevaluate and kind of change your business model as such in that way. And now you and I cookies looks different than it looked during lockdown. And and like I ordered um a lockdown, like it seems even though we're still kinda just coming out of it, it seems like that was another I don't I know. know. It's a weird feeling. But because I remember you and I cookies and I ordered the cookie and it came, my boys were like psyched and it came and it was so exciting getting the lot everything you wanted it to be as a brand it was for us but now it's even so tell me what happened then with the how it looks now compared to when I ordered it like 18 months ago um, we as we've said we, we had a product that we knew we needed to get to customers so we designed the box trial and error with that so that it got to the customer in one piece and then the craft brown box was all the rage. The logo was there. We were like, yes, let's go for it. Let's get this out there. And then, as I say, it's a slow burner, ticked over for years. And it was great. And then just kind of end of last year, we were like looking at Instagram. You lost 
you lose your way sometimes on Instagram and Barbara's really OCD about the grid and how it looks and everything has to be and then if it goes off track she loses her mind a wee bit and <laughs> it's like we just found that there was no no clear the brand had kind of lost its way and it wasn't it didn't represent what the business now now was it's it's grown so much and evolved that we are so much part of the brand but it didn't represent us anymore it didn't represent all that the product could be that when it lands on your door that it's a oh what what is this and when obviously lockdown and online sales went through the roof for so many companies and a brown box is great and it does the job perfectly and I'm not this in the brown box because it's 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 what it is but more and more brown boxes come through your door and we knew that we needed to start setting ourselves apart from just that and as a gifted item it needed to land on your doorstep and the recipient to go what like what is this that has just landed with me and it's that's the thing it's about the experience it's yeah. to stand you know it's to stand you know the packaging the product the whole thing has to come together and as well as we're all about the fun personality bright colorful yeah. it's it's making smiles it's all about so then the brand didn't really match at that time and if you look at even like moon pig their packaging's lovely bright pink zara's moved to bright pink yeah. stuff um like never fully dressed they've got the boobs on their packaging you know they're all the packaging like as soon as it lands go oh so it's kind of like going we were like we well, yeah if we want to keep the growth going the brand needs to change basically because it needs to stand yeah. on its own as a as a whole yeah and as a, as a gifted item that is the first that is the brand basically if it lands on your door that's the first part the first thing that customer is going to see is that it's not a storefront because nobody we don't have a storefront so it's not as if the, the our main focus was the box and then everything else kind of came along with that so it wasn't just so much the logo that we needed to change it was all kind of designed around around the packaging changing the colors mm -hmm. of the packaging um so yeah, could you was, still could you still keep your same supplier and shape or did you have to go down that whole road again no same supplier same shape of box same everything just moved to digital print yeah different factory just but same same company so yeah. And obviously a lot of money is spent on your packaging and sometimes people are reluctant. I know I know from my history in retail as well, um, they're reluctant to spend the money on the packaging, but you have just highlighted and, and even to me, like made it reinforced it to me too, how flipping important that is really. And I just got a Zara box this morning and it's pink. You're so right. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's it's all and you and you recognize it, you go, Oh, like and it's it's really about that's what it's it's all about and it's the whole our product we can't we want that person to gift that to someone else to make them smile so to have that box coming through their door and they're going they can't wait to get in because it's already fun before they have even opened it up it's that's what essentially and or go through even the postal system you know I would love to be in the Royal Mail, yeah. like sorting office to see that going same. down. Like, we'd love to be able to get in there and do like a reel in there, but going down the, the line and all yeah. that kind of stuff and all the bright boxes because it's just like phenomenal. But yes, it's a massive investment. But at the same time, we thought it was worth it for it's for the overall gifting experience. People are willing to pay that wee bit more for a product whenever it's an overall better product yeah. and I think that's what we kind of yeah and I think make our decision like there's been a lot of podcasts recently where they've talked about brand values and you obviously have yours like in your mind at all times when you're creating your content when you're doing your packaging and obviously you've just said like it's fun it's to make people smile it's it's you know obviously that's what you've kept at the forefront when you're doing this yeah totally and again that, that as much as that was always the the initial like point of the product and and the business but over time that has that has grown like the brand the core of the whole brand is is so much us but now it's because we've got a team of girls up there they're part of the brand and they're fully invested in it and you know I think everything that you do and and 
day to day, like all we talk about is our crops. And you're like, that. So technically now crops are part of our brand because all the girls so wear them. For anybody listening that doesn't know, uh, Barbara Ann and Ruth have created a community of people that it's okay to wear Crocs everywhere and, and it's trending on social. <laughs> I actually don't even have a pair, but I know that if I embraced, embraced that, that I would be a Croc lover as well. I just know oh, it. Yeah. Um, but that you have that power of creating that community. And we do talk about that a lot in the podcast where there's now an ooh and ah community of people that when you do things as well, people support you and other business owners. And that's the next thing that I wanted to talk about is collaborations. And, you know, I've seen you do that a lot in such a successful way and businesses do struggle with that. Can you tell us what that is collaborating means to your business and how do you kind of, you, you start that off and, and grow it? I think like for us, it's always been part of the small business community and helping support each other. And I think that's where a lot of our collaborations we kind of work towards. We've done some really big ones that we work with Never Fully Dressed. They approached us and it was like one of the biggest ones we'd ever done. And was oh, like, tell us, tell me about that. I want to hear about that. So they were launching their new pyjama range. So they had got in contact and they were wanting, as part of their PR package, um, to collaborate. And then they were giving away then our, our cookies along with pyjamas and all that kind of thing. And there was all our good ma- like major companies in and it was kind of like it was okay, it was book made with the colors the pajamas are really bright bright colors so they got like all the different colored dots icing dots on the outside and then we created we like edible pajamas and put them on the cookie then for each of the influencers to get them so each one got whatever pajama style they got um so that was one of the biggest collaborations we have done and it was like it blew our mind to kind of work with such a big company kind of thing but even though like our core values of like brand is kind of keeping small because we're just like all about that kind of small community and we're still small fish in big waters and it's kind of like going you still want to have everybody's back and and be part of that and I think more so I think we would like to still like collaborations be part of that small business because even though you want to grow a worldwide brand, you still want to be have those small business values and still support your yeah. local community and, and small business community and doing those collaborations and help somebody else. Because I know for like for the likes of you gave us a shout out at the start of lockdown and that, that gave us a kick up the ass to actually really go, right, okay, we could do this. You know, from that shout out that you gave us and we were able to put ourselves out there that it actually gave us, right, okay, we need to get on here. We need to do this. And then now that we have from that, then we want to give help somebody else along too and kind of do that wee bit more. And and working with the other businesses is a great way of doing that. I think for collaborations for us, like Never Fully Dressed is great. They obviously had seen how they can adapt our product to suit them and I think any ones that we have approached to collab with they have to, you have to marry well with there's no point in us collaborating with I don't know somebody that doesn't it doesn't they tell, have me about, to tell me about another one then so you've done Never Fully Dressed which is a bigger one have you got a smaller small business collaboration that you could use as an example just so people can know what kind of things you did well, Ted and Stitch we did recently, that was a couple of weeks ago, we did the This Girl Can, all very much girl power. Um, Sarah did the, Sarah and Paul, did the uh, This Girl Can t-shirt and we did the like chocolate overload, um, fully loaded cookie because who doesn't love a bit of chocolate? Yeah, um, and the point of that collaboration, just because some people don't understand why you do this, so you've said uh, to support other people, but when two businesses like that, like Ted and Stitch and, and Una come together, it's magic, like, isn't it? Like, I'm sure it was a sellout. Yeah. Totally. And um, it's, it's, two, it's two audiences. Yes, you know, Ted and Stitch, and we're both from Northern Ireland. We're both in relatively yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of younger. Our, our followers are probably quite the same. You're not going to get massive followers from it. But the same time is, they are possibly different followers and it's a different audience that you're you're going to and it's it's a sale that is out of your normal daily sales and it's kind of as well as then you're marketing yourselves to other smaller businesses that you could potentially work with that they're going well 
I think I could drop them a line and we could do this or, you know, you can adapt and, and look at, you know, for other people can open their eyes and go, well, if they did that, well, I can do that. Yeah. You know, and if businesses mm-hmm. are listening, it do, like you said, it doesn't have to be about big following. It just can be about something positive happening that actually shines a light on both your business. And so yeah. people shouldn't feel like they can't reach it. Like all you can say is actually, that's not right for us right now. But if you're listening and you think of a business in your head and you think we could do something really cool together, I always say, just flip and ask them. Just yeah, send them exactly, message. exactly. Because exactly. there's, you know, there's ones that have contacted us and we've just went, it just doesn't work. You know, we can't, you know, and there's other ones where we're going, oh, there's a couple coming up. We cannot even think about the way that they are going to be insane they're insane and and it's two small companies that we love they're northern ireland they're you know local and it's kind of like going it's brilliant because you get so much excited about it and it's just something new you can get to create for us it's about getting to create something different that is not on there and collaborating to for the next two come along it's collaborating two products together and it's kind of like coming up with something that hasn't essentially being seen before or that yeah just and it keeps 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 your business fresh keeps it in people's minds all the time and you know sometimes I used to do things whenever I had my shop and and my family and all be like like what did you get out you know what did you really gain out of that but I always knew it was keeping you you know like everyone you were evolving all the time meeting new people so I love watching your collaborations I love when you write it's a sellout and I'm like yeah for everybody and I just think that um whenever people listen to this I hope they're inspired to maybe embrace that side of marketing as well because it is marketing when you do collaborations yeah and a collaboration as well as it gets people onto your website whether they make a sale or not then it's you're getting them to your website which is a win-win because they're getting to see something that potentially could look like buy later on and going oh I'm going to get that for Sandra next month's her birthday or something like that do you know what I mean yeah. it's kind of like as long as you can get them onto your website that's a win for me because yeah. you're showcasing your yourself and your products over and over again so definitely so what is what's what I'm afraid to ask, what's the future? We're like, what the hell are these girls going to do next? Um, but obviously you don't want to give away all your secrets, but is there a plan or are you just kind of taking it as it comes and hoping there's no more pandemics? And shit? Yeah, well, that, would be good. Yeah, that would be good if we could just get to work every day and yeah. normal days work. Um, the, the end of the year was hopefully something um, exciting happening. For yeah. us, which will just be like a godsend. Um, so that's like ninety nine percent there, which is so exciting. And all the girls every day are like, "Have you heard anything yet? Have you heard anything yet?" And we're like, "No, we're they're still working." Oh, on I'm it. excited to hear what that is. Okay, um, so and then growth. We just so like before before twenty twenty, basically we were aiming. We were had been working with Invest and I. We had got innovation vouchers to help us get our product with a bit more shelf life. There's only 14 days on it. We don't put any additives or anything in it. We're all about good quality product that isn't fresh. You know, it's not filled with preservatives and stuff like that. So we have been working with Lockery College and of SNI to try and get the shelf life extend up because we get inundated with inquiries for shipping to EU um, worldwide. So that's, that is the aim for, which has now been pushed to 22, but it's, it's in the process. It should have been going live earlier but it's not a bad thing you know yeah so it was out of our control so that's yeah continued growth and widening the market to different countries which wow is so yeah, that's unreal like someday I'm gonna say you know I know the girls that own <laughs> <A&R>. <laughs> and you know, that's another thing that we were talking about about brand so so say your Facebook ads and it looks great, you've got a really strong brand and brand image and then people people think you're bigger than what you are. They think you're this big company and they're emailing you and phoning you whatever time and you're like, right, hang on a minute, I we do not have a dedicated customer service team. Like you're getting a reply whenever everything's finished being baked and as much I as that. a strong brand is great, you're like, okay, but we're still just the two of us trying to do all this and the girls are there doing their, their bits but it, it's sometimes it's it 
not it's not a bad thing that's not what I'm trying to say just I know that. I know but you know what you said growth was your strategy next year there will be a, gar- a girl or boy on the call desk answering all those people I know it here I was like it's gonna have to be a boy because we're gonna have to be like equal opportunities here because but I don't know how many men would survive in there like our husbands come in and they're only in and out and they're like I could listen to that all day. You're like, oh, you're talking about what? Is that what you're talking about? And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I know there's going to be a guy on the team soon I know it because I just think you know it just it, it embraces so many people I think the whole ethos of your brand and everything yours I could talk to you all day but I know that people have got so much value and I want it all to sink in and they're going to take it away we're going to write show notes and put all the links for everything that like box I need that link because even though people say that flip and comment like oh I got it on Amazon I hate when people say that. I'm like, no, there's a million, there's a million light boxes on Amazon. I want to know which one you bought. So we're going to put all that on the show notes. And if anybody that doesn't know Anna, I don't know who those people are, but if they don't, um, where can they find you guys? Like, how can they get in touch with you? What's your website and your social handles? The website www.anoohandaah.co.uk because everybody gets it. It puts two H's and two on both, so it's kind of like going. So it's anr.co.uk. Yes. And then Instagram is um, anr.cookies. I want to say at anr.cookies. Yeah. It is. It is at anr.cookies. Yeah. Okay. On Instagram and Facebook is anr.cookies. Oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> it's really bad that we don't know. I will put all the proper handles in the show notes <laughs> and you girls go and learn what you are on yeah. Facebook. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much. I can't wait to see um, your next collaborations, what the big news is at the end of the year and see everything that happens next year. But it's just a joy to watch online. And um, oh, thank I, you. I can't believe it's the first time we're talking face to face virtually, but I feel like I know you so well. And now when I'm talking to you, I, I, that rate, it confirms everything that these are the best. So thank you so much and stay in touch. Yes, you you too. Cheers. Thank you so much for listening to the Dig Podcast. If you missed anything, we've made some show notes with links and all the good stuff we've covered today. Also, don't forget to screenshot this episode and tag Dig for Success so we can reshare on our stories. So Remember to hit the subscribe button and I will see you all on the next episode.